About two years ago, I got fed up with the locks that came with the Reptile 1 enclosures, and I ended up making my own. I've really enjoyed using my own locks, as they addressed all of the design flaws and inconveniences of the original locks. But there are still a few problems with my design that I came across after using it for two years. The first design worked very well with the small Reptile 1 enclosures. It can be operated entirely with one hand, and automatically locks when the door is shut. But the larger enclosures with heavier glass doors don't swing out automatically, which meant that opening it requires two hands. It sounds like a minor problem, but it got really annoying as I'm usually holding food or a spray bottle for the reptiles when I'm opening these doors. Instead of a spring-loaded latch design, I wanted the new version to have a latch with an on and off position, somewhat similar to the original Reptile Unlock. The key of the original lock was very frustrating to use, and the way the latch slowly comes up as you turn the key is also quite annoying. So I made it a point that the new lock must have a latch that toggles between the locked and unlocked positions quickly and easily. This led me to look into bistable mechanisms. As the name suggests, bistable mechanisms have two states in which it is stable. Any other position other than the two stable states will result in the mechanism snapping back to one of the two stable positions. After some research, I got onto the drawing board and designed the first prototype. The distance in which the latch travels was good, but the straight pieces on the mechanism did not allow any flex, and the whole lock was flexing instead. The curved design also had a similar problem as it was still too rigid. This was finally addressed with the third design. But all three designs at this point had weak points where material fatigue happens. After flexing the plastic back and forth enough times, they all eventually broke. So I addressed this by making the attachment point of these spring pieces into a hinge joint. The last thing that was missing was a loud audible click. The click to me is more than just a satisfying sound. A crisp snap of the lock provides tactile and audio feedback for the user to know that the position had successfully been switched. Similar to how typing on a real keyboard feels better than typing on an iPad screen. Once the tension of the mechanism was fine-tuned, I have finished up drawing the casing that housed the mechanism, the clip that attaches to the enclosure, and buttons for ergonomics. Another issue I had with the original lock in my first design was that sand and substrate force into the lock and it would jam up. So I incorporated a window in the back of the lock that allows substrate and sand to be ejected. This feature made such a big difference that I went back and edited it to my first lock design too. So now both versions of the locks have the substrate ejection window that prevents them from getting jammed. While the newer lock is very convenient to use, and is designed to be compatible with the whole range of glass enclosures. It is not a full replacement for the previous design, as the self-locking latch is a very handy feature for the smaller glass enclosures with doors that will swing open by themselves.